Hey, this is Richard Sedlock. Welcome back to the Green Ninja course on climate science. We've used the word energy a lot, but we haven't really defined it. In fact, most people mistakenly use the word energy when they actually mean energy resources, like coal or oil. In this very short episode, we take baby steps towards a fuller understanding of energy. We'll talk more about energy and energy resources in a bunch of the later episodes. The definition of energy at least in scientific terms, is the ability to do work. This definition also works for most casual uses of the term, like when you're feeling low on energy. In reality, energy is the basis of all life forms, and the basis of everything that happens in the universe. Without energy, nothing happens, nothing lives. Energy takes many forms. Mechanical energy, like the kind provided by an engine in a machine. Chemical energy, like the kind stored in an apple or a sandwich. Radiation, including light, as we discussed in the last episode. Nuclear energy, released by fusion, like in the sun, or fission, like in a bomb or reactor. Electrical energy, that runs our laptops and other gizmos. All life forms and many artificial devices convert, or transform, energy from one form into another that is considered more useful. Here are some familiar energy transformations or conversions. Sunlight, we call it radiation, converted to the chemical energy stored in food. Thank you, photosynthesis. Chemical energy in food converted to the mechanical energy of an animal. Electrical energy converted to thermal or mechanical energy, enabling a machine to operate. Chemical energy that's stored in fossil fuels converted to mechanical energy enabling a machine to run. So one more introductory idea about energy. A machine's efficiency is the useful output of work we get from it divided by the energy we need to run it. We'll get back to this later. As I mentioned at the outset, people commonly mean energy resources when they say energy. Perhaps they're lazy or they don't know any better. We will specifically differentiate those uh, throughout this series. Because energy is so fundamental, human history is essentially the story of finding and developing new energy resources to use. We'll briefly re uh, review that history later, but for now here's a fairly comprehensive list of available energy resources. All or almost all of these are familiar to you. Think for a minute about the sphere or spheres of the Earth system in which we find each of these resources. And it's sort of a hint, these are arranged in a kind of um, not random order, sort of a mm, geographic mm, order. Well, oil, natural gas, coal, geothermal energy, and atomic, the energy from, from atomic nuclei, all are found within the Earth, or the geosphere. Of course, without life, the fossil fuels, in that second row from, from the bottom, wouldn't be present, so biosphere is part of the answer for those, and also, obviously, for biomass. Now, the rivers, winds, and tides involve bodies of water, so they're part of the hydrosphere, but that entire water cycle is driven by the sun, so the cosmosphere is part of that answer. And likewise, winds are found in the atmosphere, but they too are driven by the sun, and so the cosmosphere would be part of that. So, in fact, basically the entire biosphere is driven by the sun. So the green and brown fields should also include the sun, but this diagram is also kind of messy, and I just hope you get the idea that there's a lot of overlap and ambiguity about what drives what and how, how things... And this is because the systems of the planet are so tightly interconnected. We'll talk about that a lot in future episodes. And that is the end of the very brief episode 9.